Hey there, Zoe Coders. I am so glad that you are here today. What is the deal with sin? Why do we continue to sin? And what is there to be done about our sin? And is sin really an issue for the believer? I think you're going to be glad that you are here today. Louis and I, I don't know if you can see Louis here, we're going to be talking about why or why not sin in the Christian's life. It may not be what you expect. Glad you're here. Has something to do with this hammer. I am, as I said, really glad you're here. This has been on my heart to share for a while, but I have this hammer here and I am sure that someone who makes hammers or makes nails, I actually have a nail here somewhere too, someone who makes nails and hammers might be downright orthodox about hammers and nails. If I take a nail that's designed to be driven by a small hammer into soft wood and I drive it with the head of a wrench or a screwdriver handle into stucco or stone, then it's not going to work right. It's going to warp the head of that nail uh, so that it won't be driven straight, won't strike cleanly, won't meld into the substance that you're driving it into. It's going to bend the nail so it doesn't drive straight. It's not going to hold into place because it might crack the surface if it's not uh, made right. Uh, it would be the equivalent of taking a screw, I have a screw here, I'm not sure you can see that, and trying to drive that with a nail um, you know, into a hard surface, it's going to make a hole bigger than the nail can stick in. And that's never going to work. For sin, in the life of the believer, we are forever forgiven. When Christ died, you and I, all of our sins were in the future of Christ's death. None of our sins had been committed yet. So the sins that he paid for were all in the future for you and me. All of the sins that we committed that he paid for on the cross were future sins at the time that he made the payment. It was an advance payment for sin. So every sin that has been forgiven of mine was in the future of his death. And now I have committed a bunch of sins in my past. I accepted Christ and was made a new creation by grace, holy and righteous in my union with him, not because of my behavior or sinlessness, but because of his grace. My sin was not an obstacle to my union with Christ because of his payment on the cross. That means that every sin that I've committed since becoming a Christian, still future tense to his payment and still uh, incompatible with my new nature as a believer, all of those sins were forgiven already. So that terrifies people because they think, oh, well, if you're saying sins that I commit tomorrow are already forgiven, then why wouldn't we just tell Christians sin doesn't matter? Well, listen, the problem with sin is not that you're condemned for it, believe it or not. The problem with sin is it doesn't work any more than driving the wrong nail with the wrong tool into the wrong substance the wrong way. The, the better reason to use the right hammer with the right nail and the right substance is because it works. Not because someone's going to get upset with you that you did it wrong. Not because, well, that's not what it's designed for. You're a moron, right? It's not just the condemnation that keeps me from using the wrong tools. It's that the right tools actually work. You and I have been made compatible with Christ so we can live a life that Christ can live in and through us as we, by faith, let him be the one doing the living by grace. Our faith doesn't merit it. It doesn't cause it. I've talked about that in a previous lesson. Instead, my faith allows him to live the life that I am actually designed for in and through me. We are not condemned for our sin, but that's not a reason to sin. The reason not to sin isn't condemnation. The reason not to sin for a believer is the righteous life of Christ is what we're designed for. It's what really works. It's perfect for you. You're most compatible, most satisfied, most jubilant, most at peace, most in rest, most satisfied with life in the life that you were designed for. And that life is Christ living in and through you. So the reason we don't sin isn't because we'll be condemned if we fail. Romans 8 1 says you in Christ and I in Christ, anyone who is in Christ is no longer under condemnation. In fact, it says there is therefore, because of what Christ has done, there is therefore now no condemnation. 
zero, none, universal sign of empty set. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We still sin, but we are uncondemnable in our sin. That means the sins that you and I commit today and tomorrow, we cannot be condemned for. But that's not a reason to sin. Paul said, if grace continues to abound uh, uh, above and beyond sin, so if sin abounds, grace abounds even more, then should we keep on sinning that grace might abound? And he said, may it never be. Not because you'll be condemned in your sin, but because you're no longer compatible with sin. It's not who you are in Christ. So yes, you're uncondemnable, but that's not a reason to sin. Instead, it's the very empowerment by grace to live the righteous life that you have in Christ by grace and that you will most enjoy because of your design. My friends, Hebrews 10.14 says that he, Jesus Christ, by one sacrifice has forever perfected. And that freaks people out because you don't feel perfect, you don't act perfect, you don't always think perfectly. Uh, all perfect means is complete lacking nothing, not being tarnished or scratched or battered or uh, faulted in any way. He has made you complete. If I take a uh, vase and take a chunk out of it, it's not complete. It's lacking something that would make it perfect. But if someone makes that vase anew, they, they, don't, they don't just glue in the chip so it looks okay. They actually take clay and make a new vase that is as it was always meant to be and it is lacking nothing. It's perfect. It's not been chipped. It's not been scratched. It doesn't need painted. It's complete. That's what Christ has done. The old is gone. It's not just patched back together. You, the old you that was in sin is gone and now you are in Christ even though you sometimes sin. Your nature has been changed. You're a new creation designed for Christ and living from Christ. You are in Christ, designed to be sinless. When you sin, you're uncondemnable, but when you live by righteousness, you're enjoying life as you're designed to live. Listen, my prayer for you is not that you would never sin again, but that you would come to know the life that you most enjoy, that you most want, that you're most designed for, that is most compatible with who you are, that uh, you truly want in your heart of hearts, that the life you love is the life that is Christ himself. The best reason not to sin isn't because there's some condemnability, some uh, uh, falling out of God's favor, some faultedness or falling out of grace. Look, those are no longer dangers for those in Christ. You are uncondemnable. The reason we don't sin is because we don't want to. We hate our sin. We're not designed for it. We're empowered to live from Christ as our life as we by faith let him live by grace in and through us. We enjoy the best possible life according to our design that is the very person of Jesus Christ living in us and through us. So my prayer for you is that you would give up on all of the self-condemnation or perceptions of others with regard to your sin and you would start enjoying the life that you have in the righteousness of your relationship with Christ who is your life. That's why Jesus didn't condemn people when he met them, even in, in the midst of their sinful lifestyles. Instead, he chose not to condemn them and told them to go and sin no more. You don't have to live that way. And if you don't have to live in sin, why would you? We hate to sin. We hate having sinned. And we love the righteous life that Christ is uh, living out in relationship with us. Uh, from within these mortal bodies. That's what we're designed for. That's the joy. That's the abundant life. It's participating in his divine life, freely given to us, not because of our behavior and not threatened by our behavior, but purely and totally and always available by grace. The rest of that verse in Hebrews 10 says, by one sacrifice he has already and forever made perfect those whom he continues to sanctify. We are growing up not trying to become something we're not, but learning to be who we already are as children of God, co-heirs with Christ, holy and righteous by relationship with and in him. Enjoy him enjoying you as you grow up with him even more 
this week. Do me a favor, like and share this video, uh, comment, let me know your thoughts. How do you feel when you hear this? Spend some time talking to God about who you really are, that you would see yourself, not just as he sees you, but as he's actually made you complete and whole and lovely by grace, not by merit, but no less the truth of who you are. And share how you feel, what he reveals to you. Put it in the comments as an encouragement to others when they watch this video at, to share their heart that we would be participating in this community more fully together. There's some neat things coming up. We're going to be going in a few weeks to two videos a week. We're gonna try to keep them short and tight. One is going to focus on some specific issues of leadership and practical application of our identity in Christ. The other one will remain more of a devotional topic like these. With those two videos a week, we're then in the months ahead going to be launching some curriculum on some specific topics that you can delve into, fill out uh, some worksheets on, and really engage God more fully in some of the principles that we're teaching here. So neat things coming. Let's build up this community, get people involved by our likes and shares of the videos. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell uh, next to subscription to get notifications when new videos come out because once we hit a uh, certain minimum subscriptions on this YouTube channel, we're gonna start releasing some Bible study curriculum here, and I can't wait to share some of that with you. That's it, thanks so much. Have a great week walking with him, walking with you. Bye. Come on, Louis. Boy, good boy.